Thank you for taking a look at my Bolidarium. I just recently started building this. Um, actually, it's not really true. I started back in October. It's taken a lot longer than I was hoping. Um, I started in October 2011. It's now halfway through January of 2012, and I made some mistakes along the way. Hopefully, you can learn from it. <clears throat> and in the also, I hope it inspires some people. I certainly was inspired by a number of people on YouTube who built beautiful polydariums. Um, you can call it a polydarium, vivarium, whatever you want. I call it a polydarium because I intended for it to be about one third full of water um, as far as the overall volume. As you can see here, I've converted a 10 gallon tank to a vertical uh, arrangement <clears throat> and then cut a piece of glass to cover the lower third of the tank and sealed it with silicone 100%. Um, and that will be the water area. I apologize for lingering on this particular photo, but I had a number of photos about the early build when I was putting the foam in place and everything, and I can't find those. So <clears throat> here we go. I'll just try to run through it. What you got, what you're looking at is basically um, a great stuff background. I put a couple things into it. Uh, a little pot that I planned on putting a plant into, a little fake vine, um, a number of things. And what I've learned from that process, I'll tell you, all, anything you put in a grape foam, a grape foam won't hold it in place. So you got to plan on <clears throat> tacking it up with tape or string or something to let the grape foam dry for many hours. Um, so that's one little tip about grape foam. Another one is I was trying a new background or a new coating on the background which I got an idea from another YouTuber, um, goes by the name Grimm. Um, beautiful, he makes beautiful vivariums. And one time he used this mixture of <clears throat> Eco Earth and Type Bond 3, and it made this really like hard um, coating that was super water resistant and resistant to wear and tear. And I thought this was a great idea, so I tried it. Well, apparently, I don't know if my garage was too cold or what the deal was, but or the mixture is wrong, but the uh, it never really condensed to a, a hard coating. It remained, it still to this day is, is flaking off a little bit here and there. It's just, <clears throat> I don't think I'd use the Type Bond 3 method again. I'd, I'd either just use a silicone, you know, where you'd coat the great, phone, the great stuff with silicone um, and put the Eco Earth or stuff, whatever, on top of that. But that's what I did, and you'll hear later on how that uh, basically was worked out or not. I then wanted to build a lighting hood on top of it. I just used some lightweight plywood and some other wood to support it. <clears throat> As you can see, it's pretty rudimentary design. Um, feel free to ask any questions about it if you want. I then had a existing aquarium light hood, reflector, and double bulb mount that I'd taken out of a previous aquarium. So I screwed that into the, what would be the top of this light hood. Um, easily enough, the bulbs don't have much weight. I'm gonna use a couple of CFL 6500Ks. And so that went in pretty slick. And then I went ahead and put on a, a dark mahogany stain, just a couple coats. I think it does, it, people say don't stain plywood, but honestly, I think it looks fine. So here's the build with the light on. The light really does a lot to make it look better. As you can see, there's still some patches I had to cover with Eco Earth. Um, you can clearly see in this picture where I inset a little pot. That pot's only two inches wide, just a little plastic pot. And I did this because actually I'm gonna use the same plastic pot to put into this so I can remove, place and remove plants from that particular location. And there's a couple of vines and otherwise the whole bottom is empty as I need to run all my water tests still. And here to fill the space in the back where I'm going to be hiding the heater and the pump and everything else, um, I actually I took a piece of wood that I got from Petco and um, Mobani wood or something like that and <clears throat> I cut off a big chunk of the back so it fit nice and snug and leave about two inches of leeway so I can put the equipment back there. And I think it blends nicely into the upper section. So then I started into my water tests. And this was just a series of frustrations, and still is, quite frankly. I had extended my background covered in Eco Earth 
down below the water line. And here you can see clearly that the eco earth that, re that remains below the water line stains the water terribly. So I've been changing out the water like every two weeks for a couple, maybe for a month, I would say. Uh, and it just, it's still not better. It's getting slowly better. I've tried adding some things to make the water actually more basic because the eco earth seems to want to shift it to acidic, trying to get it to go through that process faster. But at this point, it's still stained, and quite frankly, I got so tired of looking at this tank with the stained water and no plants in it that I just had to do something. So as you can see, I put a couple of bromeliads in, which I got really excited about. Um, the bottom one has a white fringe to it. I apologize, I don't know the name. But it's basically a green leaf with a white fringe to the leaf. And then the upper one that maybe the picture doesn't pick up very well is actually a little fireball. So I'm hoping to get a lot of color out of that. I also have a couple of the true epiphytic um, bromeliad species there, the little guys with those sharp pointy leaves. And immediately I started noticing that with the water in the tank and having glass covering the upper section um, above the glass that that uh, keeps the water in the lower section. So it's, it's basically a sealed container. And what I was noticing was that it was fogging up terribly. I'm sure other people have had this problem too. Luckily it was an easy fix. I had already pre-drilled the top of the tank or what would be the top once the whole 10 gallon tank was turned vertical. Pre-drilled it with two separate one and a half inch holes through the glass. And so I decided to utilize one of those to allow air to blow into the tank. And so I got myself a computer fan and an old DC battery um, or sorry DC plug-in those the right voltage and amperage you always want to look at that when you're doing this project for me the right voltage was about 12 volts the right amperage was about a hundred milliamps <clears throat> and I wired it up so that it would sit on top of the glass and blow down into the tank and it only took about 30 minutes 45 minutes until I had no fog and no condensation on the glass at all and it's not a lot of airflow, believe me. It's, it, you can barely feel it, but it's enough. It's impressive. And you can't basically see it in this picture, but it shows the blue light. This fan had a blue LED built into it, so there's a little bit of night light, which is pretty cool. And then today I put a bunch more plants in, because the more plants I had in there, the more excited I was about this project. And I need some excitement, because I'm still struggling with the stained water um, because that whole lower section is going to be a functioning aquarium at some point. It's here. It's going to have some fish and plants in it. But So I'm frustrated at the bottom section. In future updates, I hope to tell you that's resolved. So I put more plants in, and I love them. They're great. You can see um, there's an asparagus fern. There's a nerve plant, which you can hardly see, but the bromeliads are already there, a little bit more moss, and an orchid sort of sweeping up and across. If you look at it from the side then you can sort of see how the orchid creates structure to the whole tank. I'm a lot happier with it with all these plants in. I think it looks pretty good. And uh, as far as the water staining, I'm just hoping that at some point it stops so I can continue working on this tank the way I'd like to. Um, my goal is to have fish, shrimp, and plants in the bottom. And then actually once I get this up and rolling, the reason I did a full glass front and almost completely sealed like that is I'd like to try to put some arboreal dart frogs in the upper section. So these are frogs that normally hang out in treetops. <clears throat> they can swim a little, but they don't need to. I'd love to try it. So this is my project. Please stay tuned if you're curious how it goes.